Welcome everybody to the January 2024 meeting of the Bike Walk Commission. I'm Tanner Thompson. I'm the chair. Um, we we don't usually do roll call. I usually just introduce people. Um, I'll quickly introduce our other commissioners that are present: Emily Burneman, uh, Manny Salgado, and Christine, who just joined. Welcome, Christine. Um, the first thing on our agenda is always public comment, and we have a member of the public here already, Diane Loricella. Diane, welcome to the meeting. Do you want to go first? Thank you so much. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the Bike Walk Commission. Um, I noticed on the agenda there are several really great um, topics. I'm going to lower my hand. <laughs> um, I do, I'm sorry that my screen looks like last June when we had the uh, forest fire issues. Um, I'm not sure. I need a lighting director in my home office. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say that um, in the process still of planning for, uh, and this could be an education uh, uh, as well, and I'm reaching out to the city tomorrow morning um, on uh, February 4th, it is Rosa Parks' birthday, and it has been found under the State Department of Transportation at, they've decided to note it as um, Transit Equity Day. And um, so I just wanted to see if you could, I guess, pencil it in. Uh, I know that the next meeting you have will probably be after uh, or before your next meeting. Um, I'm going to reach out to you, Mr. Chair, in um, email. Um, I wanted to um, just state that uh, through the city um, and Michelle Matthews, Woods Matthews and others um, going to have a some kind of a city event or or invite the city to a press conference. I will of course make sure that your commission is aware of it and invited. Um, the uh, plans are still in the offing, um, so that I don't have a specific thing for the bike walk commission except to say that. Uh, I'm working with the Norwalk Transit District. We have a meeting, a Zoom meeting on Friday. Uh, they uh, very much want to, um, they've been involved for three years now, but in a minor way, they want to do a little bit more. And much of this has to do with their transit district and the fact that bicycles and people are in a walkable city that you all have been advocating for to make sure that people have access to um, public transportation, and uh, it does extend to bike, bike, bikeable and walkable community. So I just wanted to ask you to put a pin in the date. I, I right now, not sure that we will celebrate it on February 4th, because that is a Sunday. The transit district has their lowest amount of, of uh, use, but there are things we can do both before and after February 4th but I just wanted to let you know that it is commemorating Rosa Parks, who was considered the um, front, front man or front person for the Montgomery bus um, boycott way back in the 60s. So thank you for letting me speak and I look forward to the rest of your agenda and the good work that you all do. Thanks, Diane. Um, can, can you send me the info on that Friday meeting with the transit district? If I can sure. say I would love to. Certainly, yeah, I will. Thanks. Um, and uh, we absolutely are uh, supporters of public transit over here. Um, I, I like to think of it like this, um, that everybody who gets off the bus is immediately either a pedestrian or a cyclist or a wheelchair user. And uh, the, those all funder, fall under our remit. So um, we, we definitely support the work that you're doing with the transit district. And I'd like to, like I said, be involved on Friday. Um, do we have other members of the public that would like to speak, provide comment, or just introduce themselves? Uh, I'm noticing we have one uh, non-panelist here, Andrew Sinclair. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Um, if you have anything to say, now's the time, but if not, uh, thanks for joining us. I'm all good. Thank you. All righty. Um, so uh, last call then for public comment. I think everybody else that I see is either a city employee or a commissioner. So I think I will move right along. Um, 
The first thing on the agenda is the Recreational Trails Grant. Um, Greg, do you want to introduce this or don't me to? Uh, you you can go ahead, Tanner. You've been you, we, we spoke earlier and you said uh, you did some uh, due diligence on it. So why don't you go ahead and introduce it? Yeah, awesome. Um, so for those of you out of context, um, the Connecticut Recreational Trails Grant is one of several grant programs that the state uh, does to provide money for infrastructure relating to walking and biking. Um, specifically, this one is for recreational trails, as is in the name. Um, the reason that it's on the agenda is because um, there is a larger regional initiative underway right now um, called the Fairfield County Greenway Partnership, um, which is a coalition of advocates, uh, city employees, and city leadership from towns up and down the coast from Greenwich up to Bridgeport. It started in Bridgeport, in, in sorry, in Greenwich and Stamford, and culminated recently in um, the city of Greenwich, together with support from Stanford, applying for this grant to do planning and design for a trail that would connect Greenwich and Stanford. And they were they won that grant award, I think, to the tune of two hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars, and that was matched with a local twenty percent match, which is standard for that grant. And um, that will go, like I said, toward planning and design for a trail connecting a park in Greenwich and a park in Stanford. So. Um, like I said, though, the, the coalition, the, the initiative is larger than just Greenwich and Stanford. So um, a few months ago, um, one of the leaders of the coalition reached out to me and said that it might be a good time for Norwalk to start thinking about the next phase of this, this idea, which would be to extend the trail concept from Stanford through Darien to Norwalk. Um, obviously, there's a missing piece right there, and that is the town of Darien. So one of the things that one of the action items I took on last month was to make some inroads in Darien, potentially even with uh, city leadership there. And I could I can report on that a little bit. Um, I have a contact over there who is the deputy registrar of voters. And I talked to him today and we together, we drafted an email to the board of selectmen in Darien um, that I just need to click send on, but it's all written. Um, I did find, for example, I don't have it pulled up right here. Um, actually, maybe I do. I found their the 2023 goals and priorities for the Darien Board of Selectmen. And there were lots of relevant items on there. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to find so many. Um, one of their priorities include uh, community wellness, including mental health, sustainable practices and policy development, healthy recreation, um, promote and enhance a walkable community. And then the perhaps the most relevant one, improve transit, bike, and pedestrian access throughout town and between neighboring towns, which is exactly what we're proposing to do. So I was encouraged to see that on their list of priorities. I'm going to include that in the email that I'm going to send um, and hopefully find some supporters on the Darien uh, Board of Selectmen. Um, I've also been looking into the, the grant application itself. Um, actually, Emily took this on as an action item. I, I took a look at the application as well, but Emily, is there anything you want to share that you found from looking at it? Um, I Yeah, I was able to review a completed application with Andrea Gartman from the NRBT because they applied with the town of Wilton last year. So she was really helpful in providing just additional documentation and pieces of the application that helped kind of break it down. And she's um, happy to help us in whatever way she can. So, I mean, the the biggest question I had was applying for this grant and the money to put down for the grant. But I think, yeah, before you get into that, we need like a like scope of work and project. And that really depends on your meeting with uh, Darianne. Yeah, um, I think it does to some extent, although um, I think the the high level pitch of just like a trail that connects Norwalk to Darianne to Stanford is is really all we have right now. We don't have a specific routing in mind. Um, and that I think that's more or less what we're going to put on the the application. But that also depends on um, um, you know what like I would like to, for example, take a look at the um, the application that, that Andrea shared with you. Do you have copies that you could forward me? I do. Yes, okay. I have a folder. Yeah, I if you could forward that, that'd be great. Um, okay. And then also, I reached out to and got a response from a member of the Public Works Department in Greenwich who actually filled out the application for last year's grant. Um, Michael Kisselock is his name, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and he said he'd be happy to meet with me and, and talk to me about the 
application process. But this is all in service of the idea that um, for the upcoming grant application deadline, which is March 11th, that the Bike Walk Commission could take the lead in filling out this application. Um, I talked to Greg earlier today, and he mentioned that TMP would be able to help with the more thorny things like potentially the, the scope of work statement or the like the timeline and the proposed budget um, because they have much more experience dealing with consultants than we do. <laughs> but the the high level, like articulating the project need, doing the, the legwork of filling out all the, the little questions um, and stuff like that. I think the, I, the conclusion I've come to after talking to these people and reading the application itself is that I think that we can, provided that we have the a little bit of support from TMP that Greg seems like um, they're willing to provide. So Greg, do you want to add anything? No, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're happy to, to, you know, partner with you guys on this and, you know, and looking at the application, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, be able to assist, especially with like the project location map, um, you know, scope of work, um, you know, even, you know, letters of support as well, you know, we'll reach out to our network and uh, outside stakeholders to get, you know, letters of support, um, you know, and especially the cost estimates as well. Um, you know, just because we, we deal with a lot of, you know, the numbers of what materials are costing these days, um, which will be important, you know, so it is just a high level, um, because it's more for planning and design. So, um, you know, just in, in taking a quick look at it. Um, so, but we're happy to assist. We just need, you know, to be given enough time, you know, from the commission, once you guys are able to sift through the application process and go through what you can and can't fill out and then, um, you know, give us enough time. Uh, and TMP to, to fill out the necessary sections um, and then be able to put all together before the 11th of March. Yeah, certainly. So I have two ideas about how we could move forward with this, Greg. You tell me which one you think makes more sense. Um, one is that we could pick a couple commissioners that are going to work on this in a more concerted way and do a little kickoff meeting with with you or or maybe somebody else in TMP who might be taking point and, and break down action items from there. Um, or we could like do a first pass without you and fill out everything that we we can and then toss it over the fence to you which one sounds better well i mean I, both both options sound sound reasonable um i feel like you know if the bike walk commission you know we right now at this point we don't have the you know and tanner we spoke with with garrett um you know the, at that you know a previous point um about it as well you know, yeah. at this point, we, we don't have the ability to to go through this at this time because we have so many other grants and so many other projects that we're in the process of working right now. So I think the best is let you guys take the lead on it for now, you know, over the next few weeks, get what you can get done. Um, and then once you've kind of been able to go through, then kind of what, like what we did for the um, um, for the Bike Friendly Communities Grant, you know, something like that to where you send us what you've done. And, you know, kind of highlight those sections that you need TMP's assistance on. And, you know, we have an idea of what sections you'll need assistance on. And, and we'll have that, you know, we'll go through and kind of highlight those as well. Uh, but if you can highlight those and send us what you've done already, um, you know, up to that point, and then, you know, we'll go through and you guys can even still continue to work on it as well. And we'll just have to stay in coordination with one another. Okay, then how about we do this? Um, we'll take the first stab at it. Um... Do you think it's reasonable? Does it leave you with enough time if we set a goal to have you like our first pass draft by the next commission meeting, like first Monday in February? I think that should be, yeah, that, that should be reasonable just because we we have the application. So like I said, we, we know what sections that we're going to have to, you know, be part of as well. Um, and I think we'll have to have, you know, some discussion as far as what route we should take, but I think by the next commission meeting, I think that should be um, that should be fine. Great. Okay. Well, then um, I I'll set up a working group for this. Um, I'm happy to take the lead on this um, since uh, I've been the one in dialogue with people in Greenwich and Stanford, um, and I'm excited about it. So, is there who who else would be interested in in actually like doing the legwork of filling out the application with me? Christine and Emily? Yeah, I'm happy to. And Manny? Okay, you all. Then okay. I, will, um, I will schedule a meeting to um, to like break down some tasks so we can we can divvy this out between the four of us. Because um, I don't I don't think that I've gone through it in enough detail to do that right now. And also I don't think we've scheduled enough time to do that right now. 
Um, does that sound all right? Yeah. Okay. I can also help. Nice. Is that Ben? Yep. Ben and Peter, welcome. What's going um, on? I'll include you on the um on the invite for for that meeting. Um, cool. I do want to recognize that the the work that we did um for the bicycle friendly communities application, I think prepared at least speaking for myself prepared me I think quite a bit for filling out other stuff like this grant application. I definitely went into it with a lot more confidence than I think I would have a year ago. Um, and also I want to recognize Ben for all of his help that he did in that process. Um, so yeah, I'm all put together. I'm just taking down action items right now. Yeah, that's part of why I want to help. I think uh, we can use some of the things we learned over there to help this one go uh, smoother. Cool. Um, the last thing on this topic, there is a webinar that the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, DEEP, they're, they're the ones that administer the grant, and they're doing a webinar this Thursday, January 11th at 1 p.m., which is in the middle of the workday. Um, I plan to attend. I think it's an hour long. Um, if other people are free at that time, um, I think it would be useful to have more than one person there, but it's not critical for everyone to be there. So um, I will, I'll send out the link to that um, so that you all can register for it because I think you do have to register for it. How long is the webinar? Do you know? It's not clear, but my guess is an hour. Although I, that's really not based on anything. It's just a guess. Cool. Um, any questions about the grant, uh, the application, the the concept, the vision, et cetera? Cool. Um, then moving right along, I'm trying to save some time. Um, we we do have a hard stop at 7.30. Um, so I'm trying to stay ahead of schedule so we can cover that. And also TMP's got lots of updates for us that I'm looking forward to. Um, the next thing on the agenda is an update on bike ped infrastructure education. And Manny and Emily, and I think Christine were tasked with working together as an education subcommittee. So Manny, you're the one with your name on the, the agenda item. Do you wanna give an update? Sure. Um, some things are, you know, we're, I, I would say we're kind of in a stage of unfolding at the moment where um, Emily's compiled a folder of different um, flyers and brochures and just media stuff um, that is basically developed into a library of just information that we can pull from, that we can use, things that she's found. Um, we also, we have an agenda, but we, we are still in the process of setting up a meeting to, to meet as a subcommittee, um, to discuss what direction, um, we want things to go, um, with our subcommittee, but also, um, trying to schedule a meeting with Brianna Lorfino, um, over at Norwalk Hospital, which I think would, that was something that was in development and was going to happen in December, but unfortunately with the holidays, we had to reschedule and then holidays came up. And so then that made things a little more difficult. So we're now that we're back and you know, the holidays have, have ended, we're going to try to recalibrate that conversation with Norwalk hospital. Um, and then um, I know Tanner, one thing that you and I, you know, have been worked on in the past and also trying to revisit is meeting with Joanna Zanvitor. Um, mm -hmm. with the the public, was that transportation, right? Of uh, the public school of Norwalk. Yeah, uh, she's the director of transportation for NPS. Yeah, and so I think that's another piece that will help us also to know what the school district's looking for and a ways to make connections with the school. Um, another thing that um, kind of is on the table as we were discussing items from, and maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but as we were discussing items from the strategic planning, um, we want we want our first video um, to be, our first video project to be a, some form of video just talking about the, um, the green bike lanes and what they are as a form of education on our social media. And we can even potentially throw in something related to Transit Equity Day, as Diane had previously mentioned, whether that could be 
some kind of post, anything related to that as well. Hey, can I get a water, please? Oh, hey, Paul, do you mind muting? I can't mute him. And then, okay, go ahead, Manny. And then another thing, I think that another thing that's been thrown around, and I'm not sure if Christine had thrown this around even at a strategic planning, but um, figure out how to do e-bike education. Um, I think there's a there's good possibilities to kind of jump on that um, and and figure out how to do e-bike e education, especially as probably people have gotten e-bikes as gifts and you have teenagers that are probably or young people or people who maybe haven't ridden a bike in a while who um, are going 25 miles an hour on a on an e-bike and just kind of the the different things that that brings to the table. And maybe that's even something we can discuss with Brianna um, when we meet with her, you know, there's any correlation with any, you know, have they seen any more bicycle accidents related to e-bikes and that sort of thing? I don't know. But that's kind of where we're at with, uh, with the, the subcommittee. Anything else that um, either Emily or Christine want to add? Um, well, I look forward to the meeting. Um, I did a little research over the weekend about something. So there's a group. I don't know if, who's familiar on this call. It's called Watch For Me Connecticut. Is anybody familiar with Watch? You are, Tanner? Okay. Yeah, I think it's an initiative of Condot. Yeah, it's very interesting. And there's a new law that just got passed, right, for the bill. It just got passed that the DMV, when you renew your license, you're required to watch uh, pedestrian bike safety video. So I was curious who's making those videos. So I actually reached out to, to that person. Um, but anyway, uh, it's all good work. And the e-bikes, the League of American Bicyclists have a lot of material on the e-bike situation and like guidance on the trails, e-bikes on trails, things like that. So I've got one question for the group. Um, I'll pose it to Manny. Um, do do you have a particular date that you're shooting for to to have like a deliverable? Maybe maybe the video. Yeah, I think that you know I was gonna maybe we can discuss that now. Where when what would be a good date to have that green bike lanes video out? And um, I think you know working on a deadline would be really good for me personally. <laughs> um, and so um, mm -hmm. if anybody has you know a man a a realistic deadline I, I you know we can or we can work together maybe by um mid-february what do you think about the next commission meeting in in early february what is that three weeks away or four weeks away? four weeks away yeah yeah you know we you know yeah let, let's shoot for that that sounds good i mean uh, there, there's nothing in particular there's nothing magical about that date but i think i think it's realistic but I, also i'm not a video editor but I think it's uh, it definitely gives you something to shoot for. It would be nice for the next meeting if there was like a concrete update. Sounds good. And Manny, if I could just hop in real quick also too. When once you guys have, have finalized it before you post it, just share it with um if you could just share it with us because we're happy to provide any any input um and feedback on the video as well. And you know, if you guys want any additional guidance as well. Um oh, I, I was gonna ask about that because I know sometimes, you know, the city might have you know, they have their marketing team. And so like, are we, would we be stepping on toes or would that be, is it just a matter then of just running it by you and that, that works out? Well, no, I mean, you guys can certainly post it. I'm just talking at it just more from a, you know, how to use perspective. Cause you okay. know, we, we designed it, we, we coordinated with DOT with the green pavement markings and, you know, we, we have a pretty deep knowledge of, of why it was incorporated and, and, you know, oh, yeah. why we went with that treatment. So, um, you know, so feel free to send it to us before you post it and we'll provide feedback and, you know, if you have any questions as well. But yeah, when you're done, just send it to us. Cool. Uh, would you also want to see, like, if we compile a script, would you want to see that? Because that would also help with, like, you you might have really important information actually to provide. That yeah, is, no, we, we'll be happy to look at that as well. Sure. Thank well, you so much, Greg. Uh, Manny, yeah, would, it, would it make sense in Greg to get what Greg just alluded to was that in-depth research on why it was built like I see they've got this information then to provide for the video content and secondly is our if you need somebody to like cycle through there or if you're taking a video if I'm under the impression and then 
a car, somebody like Emily may be driving or on the bike or I'm in the car, something like that, you know, during a quiet time there. I love that idea. I love both of those things. I think those would, that would be really helpful to get that information. And then Christine, yeah, totally. I agree. <laughs> I, I've got an idea that I want to throw out there. Um, I think it would be cool to, to get some important or recognizable people in the video, especially on a bike to, to normalize bike riding. Um, here's the wild part. Greg, do you think that uh, anybody in TMP would be willing to be in the video? I, I know that Garrett rides quite a bit for, for exercise. Uh, that's a good question. I'll have to check with the TMP staff on that. All right. Do you, can you, uh, can you do that and, and circle back with me? Sure. Sure. I'll let you know. Thanks. And if you have, if there's a woman too, a woman, a person of color, all those things we should be sensitive to. Sounds so great. To make sure I got all the um, action items down. Um, Greg's going to ask around at TMP about uh, riding a bike and being in the video. Um, uh, education committee, um, but many, I guess your name was on the agenda item. Did Are, are you essentially leading it or? Was um, that you know, I don't think that's been, that was decided, but. Um, okay. Does, does anyone want to take responsibility for, uh, for, shooting to get this video across the line by the next meeting? Oh, no, I, 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 I sorry. Whew. I'll take responsibility for that part, but okay. I don't know if I'm necessarily the spokesperson for the committee. I see. But I'm gladly to be the spokesperson today. <laughs> cool. Um, I'll put whoever you want on the agenda for the spokesperson during the meetings. I just, I thought, Manny, you were the spokesperson. That's why I put your name on there. But if anybody else wants to be, I can certainly do that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind doing it today. And oh, okay. Unless, you know, Emily and Christine are saying, you know, I, you know, I wanted to have the main floor, but. I'm happy supporting you in this, Manny. Same All here. Right. Um, other items on education or should we move on? I think that's it. Those are the irons in the fire. Cool. Well, then we're right on schedule. Um, actually, no, we are. We're 10 minutes ahead. Love being ahead. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Bike Friendly Communities application. To my knowledge, that the results of that have not been released. The la latest I heard is that they're going to be re released in January, but I'm not sure how this got on the agenda. Maybe somebody knows more than me. So, Tanner, I put it last meeting, Christine had brought up that you guys wanted to put on the agenda to talk about uh, potential for a celebration. Or yeah, what, what it might you be all wanted to do if you were if if the city was given a, a okay. you know a rating. So I put it on there because of that. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I if I remember right, I think that we're going to get some guidance on how to do that effectively along with the rating. Like the league knows what they're doing here, and yeah. they they've done this with hundreds of cities. So I think that we're going to okay. get some some advice there, but. Uh, okay. Right. Assuming that we do get some sort of recognition, I think the press release would be in order and we should work with Michelle on that, but I'm happy to take point on that. Um, uh, any other ideas besides the press release if we you know, get a, some level of Bicycle Friendly Community Award? Besides just like wait and see what the league tells us or recommends we do. Well, maybe also rec, I like what you talked about the last meeting about working towards the bike friendly businesses maybe yes. that can be just mentioned somewhere like oh great and now we're gonna our next goal or our next step yeah i think if we can nail down this what christine's alluding to is that we've been having some special meetings about the strategic plan and one of the things we've discussed is setting a goal around getting a certain number of bicycle friendly businesses recognized in norwalk because that's another uh recognition program that the league offers and it's a great way to, to integrate with the community a little bit more um I, what I would love to see here is if we can if we can have a goal nailed down by the time we do this press release, we could put that goal in the press release and say Norwalk has just earned this designation of hopefully bronze. Maybe I, I doubt that we'll get more than bronze if we get anything. Um, bronze uh, level of bicycle friendly community, and we want to recognize the progress that we've made. Um, 
thanks to TMP and other city agencies um, looking to the future, we have these projects that are in progress and we're also working toward, you know, a dozen bicycle friendly businesses by the end of 2024. Something like that. How's that sound? Cool beans. Um, I think we can move on then and, and discuss that more once it once it happens. How's that sound? Great. Um, next item, open streets discussion. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that there are some meetings planned about this, but I, I haven't heard that anything has happened since the last meeting, but if I'm wrong, please tell me. Yeah, so Ben and I are, have a meeting scheduled with Robert tomorrow uh, afternoon, Robert Stars, and um, we have Ben put together a working document um, to go over some points to discuss, and then uh, Ben's, well, I can let Ben talk. Um, uh created a, a meeting tomorrow evening yeah, yeah and that tomorrow means tomorrow evening. evening is just as a brainstorm for the programming that we aspire to do this year yeah if i understand right um the the vision that you're going to take to robert for this year is to do something similar to last year that's also on calf pasture beach road but with more programming this time you know um stuff for for kids uh especially i imagine but th yep. that's the point of the the wednesday my thing is, is it Wednesday or Tuesday? It's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah. after, right. Tomorrow, right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, any discussion that you want to have about that in the in this larger meeting? Um, I don't think so. Just so that everyone's aware. I mean, once we, the, the purpose of the meeting with Robert tomorrow is just to kind of get the conversation started for this year. Um, and then once we make sure that he's on board, there will be another meeting set up shortly thereafter with all the other stakeholders like um, TMP and NPD. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'm forgetting any other departments. Uh, those are kind of the two big ones that I have in mind um, just to go over. Uh, yeah, I, the plan, the deltas from last year, it will be largely similar in most of the ways that matter. Um, so I'm expecting that it'll be a little bit, a little bit more straightforward than it was um, last year. But I just want to get everybody on the on the same page, and then um, submitting the e approval application, um, and then once that is processed, going to the parking authority, um, which we're shooting to go to the March. The traffic. No, it's not. Meeting. Thank you, thank you, traffic authority meeting, which we're shooting to do for their March meeting, which is like mid March. Just to have that done with plenty of time before the actual event date um, in like mid-May. And, and just for the group, uh, Robert Stowers, he's the head of the, the Norwalk Recreation Department. That's who Ben and I are meeting with tomorrow. Yeah, he was the kind of the champion of this event last year. Um, TMP was certainly a stakeholder as well, but um, Robert I pushed through a little bit of um bureaucracy to help us get this done last year on a somewhat short timeline and we're trying to help him out by extending the timeline and giving him more notice right and i believe he, they picked up some of the they picked up the costs no they did they did pick up the cost so that's what we're proposing again so we'll see how that meeting goes with robert i look forward to hearing okay um anything else or should we move on to the next item which is budget all good for me. Okay, cool. So um, the next item is budget. Um, we last month we discussed um, kind of the residuals, the, the 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 money that we have still in this fiscal year's budget um, that we want to do a better job than previous years of uh, allocating before the bitter end of the fiscal year. And um, the biggest thing that came up was um, tail lights. I I'm pretty sure. Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. The last order that we did, we we bought only headlights. Correct. Yeah, there were only headlights. And so we're still missing taillights. Um, we have, uh, due to some negotiation that I did last year, we have a really good deal that's been offered to us on light sets from uh, Smart Cycles here in Norwalk. And um, I, despite the fact that they are light sets and not just taillights, I, I think it behooves us both in terms of, of good spending and in terms of um, building a relationship with a local bike shop to to take advantage of this. Um, the the offer is 1800 for 100 light sets. 
headlights and taillights. Um, so I would propose that we, I think we have somewhere around 2,600, 2,700 left in the budget. So I would propose that we spend 1,800 on of that on light sets to take advantage of this um, good deal that Alex at Smart Cycles has offered to cut us. It, it beats basically any comparison price for, for the similar product. Any thoughts? That sounds good to me. Christine, I know that you've had a, a relationship with Alex for a long time. Any thoughts? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yep. So it sounds like you took care of it. I agree with you about the relationship is very important. So, you know, I think we talked, he's under the impression that we had where it's going to purchase this. So it would be good to proceed ahead in the future. I just think we need to keep the pedestrian piece on the radar here and how we're keeping pedestrians safe and stuff. And we talked about reflector vests and things like that too. So, you know, bike lights, they're the law to have bike lights, but I, we also don't want to encourage people riding in the dark at night. So that, but that's just a side comment. So yes, I agree. Move forward with the, the purchase. All right. I, I think the rules are that I can't make the motion. Uh, Christine, do you want that to be the motion? Sure. Uh, I make the motion to um, I pr pr to purchase the bike set from Smart Cycles that we spoke about um, with the sum of I think you said eighteen hundred. Yes. Nineteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen. For this budget. Yes. Uh, ben, your hands up. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. I was just wondering if there's a I guess ambition for what to do with the existing set of headlights that we have that have no taillights to go with them. I, um, I think still give them out or hang on to them until we can buy bike lights or rear lights on their own with like a separate, you know, year's budget or I'm, yeah, I'm just curious. That That's roughly my plan. Um, that's what I would propose to the rest of the commission, the latter to be specific, that, that we, the extra headlights that we hang on to and then in a future um, budget, once we've, uh, gotten in like gotten in a groove of, of figuring out how to effectively hand these out that we then buy the matching taillights to go with the the headlights on it tanner though those were they're not returnable right because the 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 ones that were gotten from the store in westport it's, it's... um wait i i haven't like pursued that to to its full end like i i haven't established that they're not returnable, but I don't think that we want to go down that road. I think it's it's a lot of hassle and also a lot of bad press for the city. Yeah. Well, how much was that that cost? So the, that um, expenditure was we got locks as well, um, and so for locks and headlights, a hundred of each was twenty six hundred. So twenty six dollars for a, a set of a lock and a headlight. Okay. Which is a decent price, but I think eighteen for a headlight and a tail light, like Alex is offering us, is uh, even better. Maybe we can give them away at one of our events, like the um, or raffle prize or at the open street event. I don't know. The yeah. single set, the single, not the set. Oh, just the headlight. I mean, I I feel a little bit funky about handing out only headlights because I think that if somebody's going to have a light, they should have both. Right, but right, but the headlight is uh, the the reflector is on every bike, right? It comes with a re rear reflector, so there is something on the rear of a bike. Yeah, unless it's gone. <laughs> oh. Right. Um. It, it's it's a decent point. Um, I think that we should prioritize though handing out sets, handing out full sets. Uh, once we get to that point, if we can, we can decide whether we want to hand out the the individual headlights on their own or spend some more money to hand out more full sets. Is that right? Gotcha. Okay. So, um, returning, Christine made a motion to spend eighteen hundred dollars on light sets, um, presumably from Smart Cycles because it's a price that beats everything else. Um, do I have a second? I second that oh, vote. Sorry. Okay. Well, with my vote, that's unanimous. So thank you, everyone, um, for voting on that. I have something else written down here. Oh, this is 
that's for the capital budget, which is actually the next thing on the agenda, um, is TMP project updates. And Greg, I'm pleased to report that I have left you a full 45 minutes to do TMP project updates. Oh, wow. I don't know if I'm going to need that long, but I guess you guys will dictate that. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So we'll start off the, so the fiscal year capital budget request. So I know July is a long time away now, but uh, the capital budget season is kicked off uh, for fiscal year 24, 25. So TMP over the last couple of months has been putting together um, a list of requests, um, you know, with the, a dollar amount for upcoming uh, items uh, on that uh, capital budget request. Um, you know, in total, you know, similar to what we did last year, we did do a pretty big ask, um, you know, not saying that we're going to get funded for every individual item, um, but we did put up a request for, a, you know, you know, same amount we did last year. So we'll see what we get. Um, you know, as compared to uh, five million, if I remember last right. year. So last year, yeah, we did ask for five million. Um, I believe we got three, three something we got approved for. That sounds like three, four we were approved for. Um, so we'll see what comes out of this year. Um, so while I don't have the specific items to share tonight, we are going to share you share those uh, with the commission through email over the next week or two. Um, the capital budget calendar is out. It's been out. Um, so the public um, public uh, planning and zoning commission will host those public information meetings starting on February first um, to go through the department's budget request. So obviously we would you know invite all of you to attend those, um, especially during the discussion on TMP's budget. Um, you know, similar to recent years, you know we've asked for projects including um, improvements, you know, including the POCD and. You know, of course, the newly trans completed trans station master plan, um, you know, multimodal safety issues, um, complete street related pro um, related pro uh, improvements and enhancements, uh, pavement markings and signage, traffic signal upgrades, maintenance, upgraded crosswalks, new sidewalks and, you know, other, um, you know, um, infrastructure related projects that will enhance, um, you know, the roadway network for all roadway users. Um, so, like I said, we will share those individual projects with you all um, so you can take a look at them and also help advocate for some of those projects because these are all, um, you know, very much needed projects that were highlighted in, um, you know, whether through customer service requests um, or, you know, you know, uh, data analysis by the city or, you know, just, you know, through the master plan. Um, these are all projects that, you know, we hope to get done. Um, so we hope you all can, uh, you know, can assist in advocating for those and, you know, and also attending those public information meetings as well once they kick off. Nice. Um, I remember last year, I I, I want to say it was Gara, but maybe it was you, came to our meeting and, and gave us like a, a description of each of the projects. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So you we'll do something similar. We'll we'll show, we'll the send you an Excel spreadsheet with that. Okay. Um it, it, would it be feasible to to do like a, a live um, run through in our February meeting? Well, the thing is that the process is going to be already underway in February. Sure. Yeah, I'm not saying the time should, our meeting is, so it's going to be kind of late for that. Um, but it would still be useful for us to know what each thing means in, in greater detail. Are you suggesting we should just do that sort of follow-up questions over email? Well, I mean, the thing is like, you know, we're just giving you what we're requesting and, yeah. you know, it's already kind of started through the process. And then once those public meetings begin, you know, then you guys can go and, and voice your, your opinions. You know, we've already begun. We're not looking to change our budget right now, what we're requesting, if that's what you're alluding to. Uh, not as much. I, I just think that it will be, it will help us to um, both in like the short term advocacy and also just in the long term to be educated about the city's plans for, for example, for public relation reasons, if we have a good understanding, if the entire commission has a good understanding of what each project that's on your budget request means, right? Sometimes it's just a, a few words that describe it and it's it's kind of ambiguous. Okay, no, we can, we can do that at the next meeting. We can do that. I mean, certainly um, if, if there's ambiguity um, when we get the the spreadsheet that you're going to email out, I think um, 
all commissioners should feel empowered to, to ask follow-up questions about what the, the project titles mean. Um, but if there's still remaining questions, then I think having an opportunity to ask them at the next commission meeting is, is still and, and we did a we we also highlighted, you know, we we did a, a description of each each project. So it's not just a, a name to the project. It's uh okay. you know, we asked for, you know, our in our asks we we included uh those descriptions, especially for the you know, for the common council members that look at it because they don't know, you know, what we're Fair. requesting just by name of a project. Fair. Um, for the for the edification of the commissioners and other people watching, I've pulled up the capital budget calendar for this upcoming fiscal year, and I just want to call out the most relevant dates on here. So we're currently in the middle of this section right here. Is this big enough? Can people read this? Kind of, a little bit. Yeah, we can see it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. Okay. So we're right now we're in the middle of this. Uh, I think Greg, you alluded to this. Um, P and Z and finance are meeting with each department to review their requests. Mm -hmm. um, and that a little more of that happens later this month. And then on Friday, January 26th, it seems like that's the the next like milestone or deadline um, where the CFO, which I guess we don't have a CFO anymore, but somehow this will still happen. Um, will compile everything and send it to these various boards and then public hearings will start um via the planning and zoning commission on february 1st which is still before our next meeting and then a week after that the cfo which again i'm not sure how this is happening because we don't have one um presents their capital recommendation to p and z probably depending like influenced by the hearings i'm not sure uh, but the point is that the public input opportunity starts on February 1st. Am I understanding that right, Greg? Yep. No, that's correct. As far as like specific dates, as far as when PMP will, you know, that public hearing, because they don't do every single department in one night. Um, so just keep an eye on the calendar for, for that and just keep following the city calendar for when those dates uh, do come out, you know, once February 1st hits. Great. Um one more question from, well, I'll let Christine go first and then I have a question. You're uh, muted, yeah, thank you. This may be a stupid question, but regarding the commission, uh, us, our budget, is that like automatically approved or is that a process happening with this budget here? So this that's, so the bike walk commission's budget is through operating, operating. This is for capital. Do you understand the, the distinction there, Christina? I've, I actually I've, don't. Thank you. So, so the capital. So let me let me. Um, so the the capital prod is the capital is related to like infrastructure related projects. Um, you know, signals, pavement marking, signage, and whatnot. Christine, um, operating budget is more on the city internal end as far as um, the budget that goes to departments for like staff or equipment um, for different. You know different items that are needed for each department staff. So you guys being a commission, that's where your um, your budget falls under is operating. I see, thank you. It's a line item within TMP's operating budget, is that right? Correct, yeah. So it's a line item within TMP's uh, budget, which is they look at each and, you know, every year everyone's operating budget is examined just as the capital budget is examined as well. And when is that process? So it, it happens, it happens, just right around the same. So after the capital, that's when, if you look at the calendar, that's when the, um, that's when the, the, um, the operating uh, budget happened as well. And who advocates for us, for the month, for us to have a budget? Well, it's, it's TMP that, that puts in through the operating budget. But it, I think that there, it looks like there's public hearings as well for this process. I, I, both of these calendars are on the city website. Um, if you just search for um, budget calendar, you can find them. But it, it looks like, based on my quick reading, that the the public hearing for operating budget is on February twenty second, and that is the that's in a meeting of the Finance and Claims Committee of the Common Council. So, like Christine, in, in theory, you could go in person and advocate for the Bipart Commission budget. Okay, thank you. Very educational. Thank you, Greg, for breaking it down. Yeah, all good. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, 
Greg, my last question on the the capital budget has to do with the recreational trails grant. Um, based on my reading of the grant, it looks like we get more points on the the application evaluation if the local match is already secured. Okay. And if 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 we're looking at the approximately the same um, amount of money that that Stanford and Greenwich they they secured two hundred and seventy thousand, and so I think mm -hmm. that the the match was on the order of about. 70,000, which in the grand scheme of things is pretty small when it comes to capital budgets. Um, is there any either line item on your, your existing requests or some source of funds somewhere else that would allow us to say that we have a local match at the time of application? Um, I will have to check. We don't have a specific item that's called out for that. It may be lumped in somewhere else, but I'll have to go through the, the line items uh, with Jim and Garrett to see if we have the the funds, um, because I believe it's a 20% match. So, yeah, you know, it also depends upon what we're, you know, what we're going after as well, or what we're awarded. Um, yeah, well, and in theory, um, this could be split with Darianne as well. Like if the, if the scope of the project includes all of Norwalk and all of Darianne, then... Right, right. No, I get it. And I don't know if, yeah, you know, yeah. again, another part is, I don't know how long, you know, Stanford and Greenwich's route wasn't, it wasn't, Long, you know, it wasn't a long miles and miles long. There, that's there, true. You know, it wasn't yeah. through the whole city. Um, so they, again, that that's going to come come to scope and what we're asking from the grant, what we're going to be asking the the consultant to do, um, and how much we're going to match. So if we look to do all of Darien and all of Norwalk, that could be substantially more than what Stanford and Greenwich were asking. That's true. Um, so we need to be cognizant of that when we actually apply for the grant of how much we can actually afford to match. Yeah. Gotta um, love grants. <laughs> well, uh, at least it's uh, 80% and not 0%. Sure. Christine? Yeah, sorry to ask another maybe stupid question, but do we have access to the way our budget is spent annually? Is that a document that we can bring to a meeting here and everybody can see it? You mean the commission's budget? Yes. How it's spent in the past, how it's I mean, I think the I think TMP has the has the official record, but I have a working record that I keep in a spreadsheet. Okay. I just maybe we saw it once before. Was it maybe Greg? Yeah, did I've you I've brought it up on the screen before. No, we, yeah, yeah, we before? we've shared it. Okay, 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 okay. Thank I, you. I can pull it up again right now if you want. No, okay. no, no. I'm good. I'm, no more questions for me. Thanks. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Greg, I'm going to assign an action item to you then to uh, examine the budget request that you have and see um, how easy it would be to, to fund a local match for a feasibility study out of it. That sound good? Yep, yeah, sounds good. We'll... Uh... We'll check on that, and then next meeting we'll we'll you still want to to run through the the Excel file um, and go through each each of the line items. Um, yeah, tentatively. Let's okay. let's see what the what the spreadsheet looks like and if people have questions. Okay. If everyone's cool, if if we're all satisfied with what the what you provide in writing, then maybe we can uh, we can forego it. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, if we get a lot of questions, then we can certainly go through. Um, through it during the February meeting as well, just so we're not firing off, you know, 100 emails back and forth. Um, yeah, you know, I just want to, you know, by that by the time the next meeting comes along, the budget's going to be already in full swing. So we don't want everybody to miss out on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, shall we move on to the other seven items from TMP? Yeah, sounds good. All right. So the complete streets. Um, so TMP is continuing uh, to coordinate with FHI Studios, who's our consultant in charge of putting together um, the implementation of Complete Streets Red Legislation, Ordinance, and Guidebook. Um, we're closely working with the consultant right now on the draft of the design guide, um, which will contain the design tools, um, you know, which will be implemented into the city's guide. Um, you know, this guide will also incorporate into the city's existing city standards and specifications of, you know, roadway standards. So we'll look at how those are incorporated all together. Um, you know, right now we're just in the process of doing a real deep dive, you know, looking into the roadway typologies and, you know, street dimensions and all the roadway 
uh, develop uh, roadway elements that go along to each item. So right now we're just very, uh, you know, very in depth of looking at all this right now and going back and forth with a consultant. Um, so this is kind of the nitty gritty part of the design guide right now, which we're in right now. Um, you know, it's also as part of the design guide process, we're targeting a spring demonstration project timeline where, where we'll implement the temporary roadway project uh, used to pilot the long-term uh, design solution. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, this is at the intersection of North Main at Ann Street. Um, so there's on the Complete Streets, um, on TMP's website in the Complete Streets um, tab, there's a, um, there's a concept which we've been developing for some time now. Uh, along with uh, FHI, FHI Studios, um, which there it is right there. Um, so we're developing that. Um, and then, you know, we asked, you know, of course, I know we've been saying it for a while. We were supposed to do it in the fall of 23, but we pushed it forward to the springtime of 24. So, you know, of course, we asked the Bike Walk Commission to not only participate, but also kind of encourage um, members of the public and, you know, get the word out to to assist um you know, in implementing this, because this is a, this is a community project. This is, this allows um, for the community to come out and, and take part in, in this implementation, you know, this, um, you know, short-term, um, short-term, um, you know, solution uh, to this project. So, um, you know, we definitely ask the Bike Walk Commission to assist, and then, you know, we'll keep you updated as far as once we lock in a, uh, a date, um, you know, for the demonstration project uh, in the springtime. So we'll keep you we'll keep you up up to date on everything uh, moving forward. Uh, thanks, Greg. I I think that base everyone that I've talked to is is excited about this and and willing to um, to get more involved to to turn people out to the demonstration project and also to help with the the actual physical implementation. Um, it's been a while since we've had a, a steering committee meeting. Can you yes. comment on that? Yes. So we, in discussions with the consultant, they're looking to do one um, over the next few weeks, actually. Okay. So be on the lookout for a meeting because I know it's been a while. We tried to squeeze one in right before the new year, um, but that was, you know, December is kind of a tough month uh, sure. to do it. So we're going to look to do it, um, you know, over the next few weeks. So just be on the lookout for a, for a calendar um, email. Okay. Um, Another question, the there was a basically the, the most recent development in, in this project that I can recall is the survey that was out during the months of October and November. Yep. Um, the link is still live and it looks like it's still open. Is it in fact still open? Are you still collecting responses? Uh we've we've it's still open. Well, I mean FHI might have kept, they're the ones that are controlling. Um they they control the uh the link, so they might have kept it open uh for additional responses. But um, you know, like I said, we're we're kind of moving into the um the design guide right now um in that development gotcha um are you are you the right is tmp the right people to ask if if, if we're interested in in like looking at the data that was collected in by the survey like looking at the aggregated responses um or the raw, raw responses if they're available um is that something we should talk to fhi about or are you so that would be us, but I don't know if we can share that information. Uh, no one's ever asked to to see the the data we've collected, but well, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss with the consultant to see how we can kind of compile that. Um, you know, if we if we can share that with you. Cool. I uh, well consider this an ask. Okay. Um, I I imagine that um, it in theory it would be accessible via FOIA. I don't. Want to yeah, no, I'm I'm sure it is. Like I said, it it would we would just have to clean all the data up. I'm not sure. FHI, like I said, FHI controls all the data. Um, so while it is FOIA, it's not us directly holding the survey. It's FHI that's that has the survey data. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, like I said, I I don't want to guarantee anything until I talk with them, um, and figure out if we can, if if you know we've seen the data, but if it's shareable to the public. Okay, well, um, then I'm, I'll uh, assign you an action item to pass that request along to FHI. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Any other questions on Complete Streets? 
Um, do you have any guess as to, or a rough estimate, I know timelines are hard, they always are. Um, do you have a rough estimate for when the design guide draft will be released for public comment and public review? Uh, that I'm not sure of as far as when it comes, you know, when it's going to be, you know, out for public review. Um, that might be shared during the SAC meeting potentially, but I, you know, okay. I would say by the springtime sometime, you know, that it would be shared. But as far as sharing it with the public, I, I can't tell you when. Um, you know, like I said, right now we're just doing a deep dive into the into the design guide right now at all the street typologies and all the roadway elements. So, you know, it's it's pretty detailed. So, I'm sure it is. Yes. I mean, yeah. I remember during one of the steering committee meetings, um, I asked if it was comparable to essentially a zoning code and um in, in terms of its its uh detail and and uh granularity and they said yes. And the, the zoning code draft that was we just voted on was like hundreds of pages. So I'm not sure. Yes, it is. So yeah, and and maybe at the next SAC meeting the, the consultant will have a better idea of when that when the design guide, you know, a draft will be available for the SAC as far as the public, I couldn't tell you. Gotcha. Um cool. I think that's all the questions I have. Um, by by way of, of uh, not announcement, but um, just in, in the interest of, of uh, collaboration, um, I've been looking for additional ways to um, to foster the public conversation around complete streets. Um, I was talking to Lisa Shanahan from the Common Council, and she expressed interest. She she leads a, a speaker series that's hosted by the Norwalk Land Trust and a few other civic organizations. Um, and she expressed interest in, in doing the next talk, which would probably be in February, about some sort of complete streets topic. Um, we were just brainstorming. I think it would be really cool to get Jeff Speck to come. He wrote Walkable City, a book that we've used a lot. Uh, and actually, Jeff has come to Norwalk once before. Uh, it was before I lived here. I think it was seven or eight years ago. Um, but uh, I think that would be cool. And uh, I'm also looking at other opportunities to to generate more conversation around complete streets. Another idea that I've tossed around is a, a book club with books like Walkable City. Um, Greg, is there? A, do, do those sound helpful to to the to the effort? Those ideas? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I don't, I, you know, the the thing is, I don't know what type of knowledge or experience people have with complete streets. I, I think they they understand what it is, but I don't think they on a technical level, understand what it entails. Um, that's just kind of what we've been finding out through this process. Um, so I, I definitely think, uh, you know, more education and, and more um, information that's out there is is best. Great. Then I think we'll continue to pursue that. Um, it We might end up organizing some of those under the offices of Sustainable Streets. Um, but where it makes sense, I think um, having the Bike Walk Commission as an official um co-sponsor is would be cool too like I, i'm not shying away from that um other questions about complete streets all right all good great yeah nrvt boardwalk let's hear it yes so um project still continuing um there's still, I know while it looks like it's done, there's just some minor work that needs to be completed on the handrails. Um, so the estimated uh, completion um, overall should be within the next month by the first week of February, it should be completely open on the uh, on the boardwalk uh, near Route 123 along Riverside Ave. All right. So that's, that is the update that I received uh, today. Although, uh, frankly, that's very similar to the update that we received last month i i understand tanner and, and i get it but if anyone it's if you ever worked with a contractor before and worked with any type of project like this delays happen you know it just snowed yesterday it's cold out there's delays in products i get it but this is what happened you know this stuff like this happens um so are you, you're saying that you would expect it to be open by the time we meet again yes that is the update I got today. Awesome. Thanks for bringing that update. Um, I, we brought up uh, in the past um, the idea of doing uh, another grand opening celebration or a, a more proper grand opening celebration. 
we had plans for one. Um, it got delayed. We ended up um, transforming it into the celebration of trail progress. Um, when I brought this up a couple of months ago, I, I if I recall, your response was that TMP is is focused on getting it done and not as much on what comes after that. Um, have there been any more conversations about whether TMP is interested in in celebrating this? Like, um, have you talked about even like a ribbon cutting? Or no, we have we have not talked about it at all. Okay. Um, we're just think, aiming to just get it to get it completed. Gotcha. Uh, once it is complete, do you intend to start those conversations? Uh, I can't. I don't want to speak for you know everybody within City Hall as far because it won't just be TMP. It will be you know the entire city you know okay. celebrating the opening of it. You know with the mayor's office, you know and and Parks and Rec and and every you know everybody who took part in this and also. The, the NRVT group as well. So it won't just be TMP. So we have to include everybody in those discussions if we're going to participate. Sure, absolutely. So we, haven't uh, had those we haven't had those conversations yet. Okay, then my request, I guess, is just that when those conversations do happen, if you notice that we're not included, will you make sure to include us? Okay. Great. Don't we usually uh, include you in everything? Oh, yeah. I, I'm just, I, I've been looking forward to this <laughs> this celebration for like four years now because I think the conversation around planning it first started, maybe not four years, maybe two or three years, but still, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah, it has. We're excited to get to the finish line on this section, at least. Yeah. Um, I, I know that NRVT is excited to celebrate this, especially because it'll connect those two pieces of Norwalk and create that longest mile. So they're having their board meeting this Thursday at five o'clock, and I'm hoping that'll be a, you know a topic that, you know, Nancy Rosette helped organize the last one. I'm sure she'd be open to, you know, another celebration or helping organize um, an opening, that sort of thing. Awesome. In particular, there were some elements that we started planning that we then put on the back burner that, you know, plans that are on the shelf that I can pull off the shelf. Uh, the one I was most excited about is the idea, we, we actually like contacted a bunch of businesses and, and we're working on this idea of a passport where people could get their passport stamped all up and down the trail at, at different businesses and other civic uh, destinations, and then potentially turn their passport in to get uh, a prize, whether that's like a t-shirt or some, something else. So I, I want to make that happen. <laughs> and I've just been waiting on the trail. So uh, anything else, or should we move on to transportation master plan? All right, Greg, take it away. Okay. So for those who don't remember the transportation master plan. It's it's been a little while, but we, you know, we have been working on this for for a few or for a couple of years now, I should say. Um, so we do have a draft master plan, which is available on the Norwalk Tomorrow website. Um, you know, we received a lot of comments. You know, we had public meetings. Um, you know, our consultant who FHI Studios, who's working on our complete streets design guide implementation, also worked on the master plan. Um, so it's a, you know, pretty smooth transition, you know, between the two, um, you know, good to do the two at right at the same time as well. Um, so right now we're just putting together, you know, putting the final, you know, final bow on, if you will, um, you know, to finalizing the, the master plan and, and formally uh, putting it into play, um, you know, as part of the you know, as part of the uh, master plan process. So um, we're a little delayed, but we're, you know, looking to to wrap it up and, you know, and in conjunction with complete streets, you know, kind of put them together at the same time. So we are referring to it a lot, you know, in the development of, um, you know, complete streets. Um, so I can assure you that it is a very, very important document for the city and we look forward to implementing it for, you know, the final draft for good, um, you know, for the city. So, um, Greg, did you mention any particular um, input opportunities or, or milestones, dates? Well, so we we've done you know we've done a lot of input. You know, we I know. you know last meeting we had was on the draft that we got input for. So right now we're just wrap you know we're just putting everything back all together and finalizing the you know the master plan and you know finalize it. Do you, do you have an idea of of when it will get finalized? Like what what's the next step we can look forward to? That's really my question. Next step is just is you know is putting it out. Finalized putting out the final version. Yeah, 
then is that something that we can look forward to in the spring, in the summer? Yeah, I would say by the, by the springtime, we should have we should have that on a, to be conservative. Yeah, by the spring, it should be fully complete. Cool. Like right. I said, we're, you know, we, we you know, work with the same group, FHS Studios for Complete yeah. Street. So we're in constant communication with them, um, you know, and they want to wrap it up as well. You know, but we, you know, doing the Complete Streets and Transportation Mass Plan at the same time, you know, it it, it is, uh, you know, good timing on that on that part. Sure. Um, do you know, is it something that will be ratified by anybody like like PNZ or, or the Common Council, or is it just going to get published by TMP and that's that? Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten into that detail yet, I have to say, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, okay. So I, I can certainly find out and let you know. Okay, I'll add that to the action items. Uh, like I imagine that the, the document ultimately will be signed by the mayor. Yeah, no, it'll definitely, yeah, it, yeah, it will definitely be, you know, formally adopted, but as far as what commission or what council it goes in front of, I, I couldn't tell you. Okay, um, I've taken note of that. Um, any other details about the transportation mesh plan? Nope. All right, see you app. Okay, hang on one second. Sorry, don't need to rush. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, CV Avenue Complete Streets Project. Um, so right now we're continuing to review and implement the recommendations based on the feedback we received from the last public meeting, which we held on May 22nd, 20, 2023, um, and incorporating um, the proposed con and, you know, the comments on the proposed concept, which we unveiled then. Um, we received a lot of public input, whether it was in person, and we received a lot of input as well through um through email as well after the public meeting. Um, so right now in working with the HB, who is, who is our design consultant for this project, we're going through all the comments, um, you know, going through each, uh, each one and uh, putting them in a document and um, going through everything. And then we'll apply that to the concept plan. Um, you know, so that will wrap up kind of the, the concept plan phase. Um, just keep in mind, we have, <laughs> zero funding for this project as far as construction so we're trying to create a you know in the interim you know until we get funding obviously creating a strong plan so that when a grant does become available we have a plan that we've already gone to the public to we've collected a lot of public input you know that we move forward and we've gotten to a point where we can strongly go after a grant to show that We've done our due diligence and we can move forward, um, you know, with money, whether it's design or construction. Um, also, keep in mind, we'll also need have to do, at, you know, much more public input as well as we advance the design through. So this was not the last opportunity for the public to, you know, to chime in and provide feedback. Um, so right now we're still finalizing the concept plan. You know, we'll we'll update that on the project web page. Um, you know, so that was the one that we unveiled on May 22nd, you know, before we got all those comments. So we collected all those comments going through all of them right now. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll apply those to this concept accordingly. And then, you know, we'll have a more defined concept and then we'll look for funding opportunities and move through all the design phases, um, along with much more public input as well through those design phases. So still a very long way to go with this. Thanks, Craig. Um, so just to make sure we're on the same page, the mm -hmm. this concept that we're looking at right here that was unveiled in May, um, yep. would I, I've heard the term like twenty percent design or thirty percent design before? Is yep. that would that describe this? No, we're we're, we're not even at thirty percent right now. We're this is just I would this is like a preliminary concept that we put together without public comment. Um, so now that we've received public comment, we'll kind of have more of a formal concept, um, but we're still short of, of 30%. Gotcha. It, at what, what percent do you anticipate getting to with this engagement with VHB, you know, without getting more money? 
Well, I mean, you know, we're taking this in stages because we're, you know, we're using just capital funds for design for right now. Um, you know, we're going to continue to look for um, for grant opportunities. So, you know, we're, we're still not finished with formalizing the concept yet. And then we'll look to move to the 30 percent. But with any grant that we go after, um, you know, aside from the public comment that we've already received, we'll still need to do additional public comment to advance the design um, and the construction as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking more about um, just understanding what money we have and what money we don't have. The, the, the money that's been allocated to this project so far, does it get us to 30%? It'll get us, it'll get us to, it'll get us to 30% for right now. Okay. Um, you know, but then we'll, we'll have to look for, you know, additional, um, you know, city capital funding um, but we haven't gotten to that point yet to where we're looking to advance this to say 90% uh, design quite yet um, because we'd like to have, you know, move, we'd like to do, you know, look at this in stages and see what, you know, what kind of money we have and, and what we can do as far as design is concerned in-house with the capital funds, I should say, um, with our consultant. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So it sounds like the sequencing is roughly finish the existing engagement with VHB, mm -hmm. um, collect some more public comment, allocate some existing city money to do the rest of the design, and then look for a construction grant. Right, correct. Got it. Yep. All right. And then with with that, you know, with that final, you know, whatever grant we do receive for construction, public input will be part of that as well. Sure. So there'll definitely be more opportunity uh, to chime in. Um, other questions from other commissioners about CVF? All right. Uh, what about Wall Street? All right. So Wall Street. So the landmark square East Wall Street section, which is Main Street to Ninth Street, um, is slated to begin construction in the springtime. Um, project is being funded as part of the CTDOT LOTSIP program, which is the local transportation capital improvement program. So yeah, between Main Street and Ninth Street, um, that's kind of the, the phase one of this project. Um, I'm sorry, Main Main Street to Brook Street, my apologies. That's right. It's, Main Street to Brook Street. For, for those of you who are without context, the a, a big feature of this project is bumping out this little uh, plaza right here into a much bigger plaza. I think it comes all the way to the, to the car lane right here. And then I think yes. this will be bumped out a little bit more. It's it's a it's it's a win for pedestrians around here to be sure. Yeah, and as as part of it, you know, we're implementing you know wider sidewalks, streetscape amenities, um, you know, obviously you know on street parking um, as well for the businesses, and also uh, incorporating bike lanes into the design as well. Um, right. So I, you know, as some of you remember, you know, the whole Wall Street corridor is being done in phases. Um, so this first phase part of the LOTSIP program. Um, which was awarded a couple of years back. Um, you know, that's going to be from Main Street to Brook Street. So that's, you know, that was out to um, bid for construction uh, in the fall time. Uh, because it's a lots of program right now, um, it's uh, it's in the state's review process right now, looking at all the necessary construction documents that, that were put out as part of the bid. Um, so we'll move forward uh, with presenting to the Common Council and going through the contract authorization um, once we get, um, you know, word from the state DOT, once they've gone over and reviewed everything. As far as the remainder of the Wall Street corridor, um, you know, we're still continuing to work with uh, Fussin O'Neill, who is our design consultant for the whole Wall Street uh, neighborhood project. Um, so there we're looking to do a public another public information meeting. It's been a little time since we had one on the Wall Street uh, uh, Wall Street corridor, um, so we're going to look to do one over the next month or two. Um, so just keep an eye out. We'll definitely, you know, let you guys know. Um, so during that, we'll provide um, an update on the plan that we proposed um, during the last public meeting, where we collected all the public information and provided, um, you know, obviously all the public comment we collected. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of, you know, present those um, for more public comment as well, where we get more of a, you know, formal concept 30% design, um, you know, in that, 
you know, from that public meeting as well before we advance uh, the design further. So very exciting to actually put a shovel in the ground come the springtime. Um, yeah, amen. Yes. Yeah. So we're excited to see that that kick off. Um, but we still have to just get through the final review and then go through the city process, award the contractor and sign all the documents and construction can begin. Do you have any, um, can you share anything preliminarily, um, any um, amendments that you've made to the plans for the, especially the West Wall Street section as a result of the public input from a year ago? Uh, that I don't, I don't have in front of me right now. There's, there's been a lot of, you know, changes back and forth. So I, I can't share anything right here, right now off the top of my head. Uh, gotcha. but but, but those will be shared things. at or in advance of the meetings that you said it was, are going to happen. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be shared at the public meeting for everyone to see. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I look forward to seeing the, that new design. Yeah. New... Yep. Other questions about Wall Street? Cool. No? Um, we've got, just to check in on time, we've got seven minutes left. We've got a bike rack order, the valet bike rack order, and then approving the minutes. And I think that we can do that. These last two were quick. Um, so we've been collect. So for the bike racks, for the regular hoop style um, with the logo, uh, we've begun collecting quotes from vendors for the hoop style racks. Um, we're just awaiting on one more quote. Once we receive that, we'll move forward um, with the low bidder and we'll place the order in for the bike racks. You know, we'll order, you know, some of those locations that which Tanner, you and Ben uh, supplied us a while back. So we'll look at those and look to put you know, some hoop style racks at some of those locations uh, over the winter time. And we'll put the order in, uh, you know, in the coming weeks. Awesome. Do you have any ideas as to quantity or, or exact uh, sites? Um, so we'll look at, you know, we had some left holdovers from previous. So we'll look at like the main street lot, obviously, yep. um, you know, we'll look at, you know, the frontage of the police department, which was another one. Yep. Um, and we'll also look at maybe some singular ones on uh, Washington Street uh, to begin with, um, you know, where the sidewalks um, can provide adequate parking um, on Washington Street for some singular hoop styles you know, racks throughout uh, the corridor. So um, those are just to, just to name a few. Cool. Um, well, I look forward to those going in. If you're saying that the right now the stage we're at is we've got you're looking for one more quote. Um, and then you'll move ahead with the low bid. I imagine that won't take months and months to come in. Like, can we? No, just, no, it, it, it should. Frame? Yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty quick, you know, because they're just like I said, they're just the hoop style and um and the logo uh, bike Norwalk uh, wraps. Oh, that's so, right. um, so that's really the only customization that would need to be done on them. Gotcha. Well, one last question on that. Um, do you intend to place any? You said the Main Street lot is in the Wall Street area, and that will be a welcome addition. Um, do you, do you think that any others will end up in the wall street area? Um, like especially uh, one-off ones along wall street, cause that would be, those are sorely needed. Probably not only because of the wall street project, and there's okay. a lot of utility work going on. Uh, also, um, you know, the 61 wall street development as well is going to begin shortly. So we don't want to put a bike rack in if we're just going to rip it out. Yeah. Understood. So that's why Walsh, yes, we're putting one on Main Street, but that that won't be touched when, you know, Main Street is ripped up. Um, you know, we want to try to avoid putting something in if we're just going to tear it out. Of course. Great. All right. Uh, Valet back rack order. So, yeah, so that um, so we've finalized, you know, we got the invoice. I submitted it to the purchasing department. So now we're just moving forward with processing the purchase order. Um, so I will reconnect, um, I'll reconnect with the company to make sure they receive everything and get a timeline for them when they're actually going to ship, uh, ship the Valet bike, uh, bike rack out. Gotcha. Um, I know we ordered this, um, with lots and lots of lead time. So we were ready for the delays that we've encountered so far. Yep. Um, but we do the, the first event that we are looking at for actually using these racks would be in April at the. Earth Day celebration. Okay. Um, can you keep that in mind as you you know talk to the the provider? Uh, like if if they if they need their feet held to the fire to get them there by April, then maybe hold their feet to the fire a little bit. Yeah. No. We we, we should, but yeah. You know, hopefully there's no issue and we'll have it in plenty of time. 
Great. Okay, that's all Thank I got. You. Uh, well, Greg, thanks as always for um, your comprehensive round of updates. Christine's hand is up. Go ahead, Christine. Hi. Yep. Thanks a lot, Greg. Always great. I agree with Tanner. Um, this is just a random comment, and it came out of research that I was doing over the weekend. But um, if we can just kind of put it in the back of our minds that Travis Sims, he's um, one of the representatives for the district, the South Norwalk District, and mm -hmm. he is on the transportation um, committee for the state of Connecticut with the General Assembly. So I don't know if we can leverage him or have him come meet, have a, you know, a speaker, here, have him speak with us one day or just a thought about that. Uh, I can comment on that. I've had conversations with him before about this. Um, specifically, it was around a year ago when there was a bill in the legislature having to do with the Norwalk Transit District. Um, and I talked to him about it. Ultimately, that bill was pulled and so there was no, there wasn't any impact to the transit district. But um, I talked to him, and I talked to other members of our delegation as well. But because he was on the transportation committee, um, that that's when I learned that he was on the transportation committee. I think um, us engaging with him, I think, makes the most sense if we have any sort of um, opinion or input about state level policy, especially you know policy that would be crafted in a legislative session. Um, you know, if if you have ideas or if we come up with priorities that need to be addressed at the state level, then it would make all sorts of sense to talk to him. Um, otherwise, I'm, I, I don't know that it would make as much sense. Like I, I, I've made a similar request to Bob Duff before, and he's like, uh, basically my job is to, to bring in money for, um, for the stuff that, um, that you all come up with. So um, I think we have been doing a good job. Um, and by we, I mean, really TMP has been doing a job of, of bringing in state money and we're gonna keep working on bringing in state money. Um, if we need help bringing in state money, then I think that's when we talk to, that, that's another reason that we would talk to our state representatives. And lastly, thank you. Um, the, um, Greg, I don't know if you had a chance to review the, um, the conference for the League of American Bicyclists in March about that whole legislative piece. Yes, I, I did get your email, Christine. Um, I haven't been able to talk with everyone in TMP as of yet. Um, things have been a little crazy to start the year in our department. Um, there's a lot going on um, with all these projects in motion. Um, so I will find out and and let let you know. Um, I don't know if you know there's an opportunity for anyone to go to DC. I know you said that there's a virtual option as well. Um, you know for you know, for city, um, city employees to attend, um, you know, that, that portion of it as well. Um, I know there's, a, you know, a, a hefty advocacy portion of the. Uh, great. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but um, we yeah. got a hard stop at seven 30 and we need to vote on the minutes. Um, oh, sorry I, about that. I, Thanks, Greg. Leave. Um, yeah, okay, let's just vote. And then we can pick this, this topic right back up. Okay. Emily, you're still around. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the December 4th meeting? Um, motion to approve the minutes. Emily, thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, and uh, I've just, I, I read them as well and I didn't find any issues in them. So that's my vote and that's all four of us. So that's a quorum. Thanks, Emily. Um, Christine. And Greg, sorry to interrupt you, but no, um, we're all good. We could just we'll have it on the agenda for next time. Okay. Thank Sounds you. Good. Um, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Well, I I didn't make the motion. I I are you you you're making a motion. Motion to adjourn the meeting tonight. Great. Do I have a second, Manny? Second. And I concur. And that's all of us. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, oh, quick uh, shout out to Paul Chenard who I noticed joined the meeting. Thanks Paul for joining. Thanks everybody else and have a good Thank one. You. Thank you.